It's the piece of technology that controls pretty much all electronics, from cell phones to cars, even products like refrigerators and ovens. And now uh, the question is, could computer chips be the next global battleground? Joining us now, visiting fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, Chris Miller. He's the author of the new book, Out Tomorrow, entitled Chip War, The Fight for the World's Most Critical Technology. Chris, thanks so much for being with us uh, to see the future. As one of our guests said earlier this morning, you just have to look to the past. I remember reading a book called The Japan That Can Say No in 1989 when the author said, <laughs> we Japanese don't have to put up with the Americans anymore. We make the, the computer chips that guide their nuclear weapons. They either do what we want them to do or their, their missiles will fall helplessly into the sea. Here we are 30 years later and we've put ourselves in a position of dependence where chips are all, you know, they're coming out of China or Taiwan for the most part. How did we put ourselves in that position again? Well, over the past 30 years, the manufacture of computer chips, which we rely on for everything from PCs to smartphones to dishwashers, has shifted uh, to East Asia, to Korea, to Taiwan, and to China. And today, Taiwan produces 90% of the world's most advanced processors, which is getting an iPhone, for example, or a PC. And so, as a result, our access to semiconductors is imperiled by growing U.S.-China competition and Chinese threats to retake Taiwan. And right now, there are many types of chips that we can only acquire from Taiwan that simply can't be made anywhere else in the world. Is, is this, uh, Chris, because we did not take the warning uh, that we should have 30 years ago? Is it negligence or is that we just didn't see it coming? There's a lot of negligence. We, for, as a country, have let the policies shift so that today it's substantially cheaper to build semiconductors in Taiwan or in Korea, largely because tax incentives that those countries provide make it cheaper to do so. So we're beginning to change this. The Chips and Science Act that Biden just signed into law will make a difference on this front, but it's right. the first of many steps that we need. So certainly the relationship between U.S. and China, which is taking a little bit of a backseat because of the war in Ukraine, about to move center stage again, particularly when President Biden meets Xi Jinping uh, next month in Indonesia. Um, tell us a little bit, though, about how that rivalry going forward is going to be shaped by this over battle to make these necessary chips and also how COVID slowed it all down. So today, China spends more money importing chips than it spends importing oil. So it's a huge vulnerability for China. But as a result, China is pouring hundreds of billions of dollars over the coming years into trying to domesticate its own chip technology. Right now, the U.S. has a real chip choke on China. China can't build the most advanced microchips without our technology. But that is beginning to shift. And there's a real risk that China jumps ahead in sort of a semiconductor arms race and is able to develop not only commercial technologies, but also military technologies as a result.